What's up, YouTube? So, got a little guest with me today. Name? Carl Hudson, he with Neighborhood name. Lawn Care and Maintenance. Yep, Carl Hudson from Neighborhood Lawn. So, a uh, quick brief of how I met Carl is uh, when uh, I started working out in Hinesville, he's already been owning this whole town, this whole city. He's been giving me a lot of different tips, a lot of, a lot of great tips. I can't say good tips, great tips. Uh, he's been a good friend for the year I started out here. And we've been just growing and growing and growing and growing ever since then. Mm -hmm. But what I wanted to bring this video to is one big thing that's been going around is when is it good to hire an employee? As you guys watch my channel, I've been slowly, I just slowly got an employee, uh, Fernando. So you guys seen him, he's been weed whacking. He don't have much experience, but that's good because he has no bad habits. But from somebody that's starting and hiring, I'd rather you guys have an uh, aspect of someone that's been in the game longer with employees. He has more of information to share with people about going on with hiring. Because I can't tell you too much about it because I just started. So, uh, real quick, how did you get into the lawn care business? Wow, so I started in lawn care in 2000. Uh, I'm retired Army, so I was active duty at Fort Hood, Texas. And... Uh, it started out with one nurse in the hospital there that I knew. She wanted me to uh, cut her yard when her, her husband, who was a soldier, went away. And then it just grew from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I came... Uh, Hold on. Mm -hmm. how, how old were you when, roughly, were you when that was? In 2000? No, was, when you started. When you started, started. In 2000, I was... Uh, Roughly. 30. Okay, so 30. Okay, mm -hmm. keep going. And so, uh, yeah, because I just turned 50 last week, so 2020. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> so just word of mouth spread from there. And I was a weekend hustler, like a lot of guys. I would, on a Saturday, I had a Ford Explorer, a Pushmore. I would rent an Edger. And I had like a a, a plug-in blower. Okay, now got stand-ups are more powerful so if I I could edge a yard that was maintained but if it was overgrown it will cut it real easy so if you got a stick edger and you got an overgrown edge you know you out there working, working. it to get it free uh, and then I would plug in I had like two extension cords and I would plug in like the French porch, you know, uh, and then I, I upgraded to like uh, a handheld blower. No, I like that you chuckled gas. a little bit. I like that you chuckled a little bit when you like yeah. had a, a extension cord. Yeah. But you still did what you had to do, yeah, no matter what, no matter how it looked, no matter how it came across anyone. But the work spoke for itself. Because she told 
this person and this person took and it just grew to the like I was spending my whole Saturday and then my son at the time was like 11 12 and he would come with me but half the time he sat he was sitting in the truck in the AC because he couldn't handle it right <laughs> so I take him and then I just give him like twenty thirty dollars or whatever mm -hmm. but back then you're talking about 2000 so I was on the charging like I was a weekend hustler. It was twenty five, thirty a yard, and I, you know, so I do maybe seven, eight yards. I make, you know, two, two fifty, whatever, and then I might give him fifty, and then that was like every weekend, okay. every Saturday. So, where was the moment where you're like business start kicking? How many years from there? So, from the plug in blower, mm -hmm. when did the business kick up where you're like? Man, I think I came across something. I think I got something here. I think I'm bigger than I realized. So, uh, so fast forward. Now, I was active duty Army. So then I did that at Fort Hood for years. Weekend hustle. Um, and then, so then I got stationed here in 2006. Fort Stewart, Georgia, Hinesville, Georgia. So I come here in 06 and I lived on the base, base housing. So uh, I would cut the backyards, like we cut the backyard. Mm -hmm. So I was the one in the neighborhood that uh, would cut all the little backyards and I was only charging like, man, I don't know, maybe $20. Yeah. And just so you know, right now, these backyards are probably no bigger than my living room. They're yeah, small. Yeah. They're small. But I charge 45 now. So, like, if he was on the base and he has yeah. equipment, he was making money. Because everyone's like, get Carl. Because he's right there. I was right there. So, man, I literally would, uh, I had, I had my push more. I put my stick edger on top of it. And I had a backpack. And I just went around the neighborhood. That's what I did. And I would, uh, not a, not an edger, I had my trimmer. So I would, you know, mm -hmm. edge with the trimmer. So I did that. Man, the weekend hustle, man, that was me. And then when I retired in 2013, so we talking about, I was doing this years. 2013, I retired from the Army. And I, uh, I started a trucking company. Um, did that for three years. And then uh, my wife was like, look, man, I supported you 22 years in the Army. But now you driving over the road, you choosing to leave. So I turned the truck in three years. And I said, man... I guess I just go back to cutting yards, uh -huh. right? So this twenty third, this is twenty sixteen. So here I go back. I'm in my neighborhood. So that's where the name neighborhood lawn care came from, because it started in my neighborhood. So understand, like, from I retired in twenty thirteen. I'm in the same neighborhood that I live in now. I was always the dude that people like, what you putting in your yard? Why your yard so green? How do you have green grass in the winter when our grass is dormant? Because I had so much experience in lawn care, I dominated the neighborhood, right? Well, that's in your yard. And so I got that tall, thick, you know, and in the winter, my secret, I would put winter rot in the winter. But I wouldn't tell them. So when I decided to go back to lawn care, <clears throat> I'm okay up. I just started in my neighborhood, man. And people was like, absolutely, I want you to do my yard. So I started out, man, probably, I probably got like eight yards off the rip. Just in my neighborhood and the one up front from me, Liberty Park. And then 
from there it just grew i started out uh i didn't even have a pickup truck man i had <laughs> yeah. i'm telling you guys see i'm telling you i so, came across so many people that be hitting me up on youtube and they're like well i don't have this i don't have this i want to start a business man if you have a bike and a wagon make yeah. it happen I mean, you're hearing this, this neighborhood is all in this neighborhood. I mean, you can do everything in your neighborhood. Not saying you're going to go to your neighborhood tomorrow, start cutting everybody's yard and making a business, but yeah. it is possible. So I was like, okay, I got eight yards. I don't even have, I have the Jag was running. It's a luxury car. I'm not pulling no trailer. So, so, <laughs> oh, the one yeah. in the garage, the Jaguar. Yeah, no, Jag. So, man, I was like, okay, uh, I don't, I really don't have the money for a down payment. So I used my military. I went to uh, uh, Savannah to uh, ah, now I can't even think of the place. But anyway, I had to hurry up, jump through hoops, and kind of went to like a buy here, pay here. And I got me a pickup truck, a, a, a mid-size. It was a, a, a Mitsubishi Raider is what I had. And I found it in the color. I knew that I wanted like a red color. So dark red, I get that. And then I bought a five, I think it was a five by eight open trailer for like 250 and I just had enough room on that thing for my push more. <laughs> Dang. My, I had my edger, my trimmer. I started out with a steel 70, right? That's the baby. Mm -hmm. It was like the first level commercial. I had a steel 70, a good push more. I think I had a Toro. And then I had a old... 420 Magnum steel backpack. It was a beast, though. I got that used. And, man, I did them eight yards. And then uh, it just took off because I already knew what I was doing. And I've always said the edge is everything. Yep. If you remember telling me that. Remember telling me that. That's why I've been cleaning my edges up a little bit better because you told me that. Good edge. And the, the driveway, everything needs to be clean. I tell my guy, I should be able to eat a hamburger off of that sidewalk. There should be no crack weeds, no crumbs. We call them the crumbs when you leave the gra crumbs of grass. And the crack weeds need to be gone. So it, it, it really makes the yard look professional. Then the dude is just coming to cut it, edge it. They leave crack weeds. They leave grass laying around. And it looks like one level up from a homeowner. When we leave, it should be a difference. You should know a professional was here. So That's the truth right the, there. The, the quality, man, is everything. Like, uh, I went to college and I got my degree. Uh... Went to business, entrepreneurship, and all that. But one thing my professor, she would say, quality brings the quantity. Don't hustle and try to get all these. Yeah, you focus on the quality, and it'll bring the, the quantity. It'll come because people are going to see your work, and they see that you stand out. Like, even lawn services I like now. That. But real quick. Yeah. We're getting a little bit off track. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's that's mind-blowing. I mean, I feel like I'm talking to, like, I am. I'm talking to a legend right here because he has so much information yeah. to feed people. I, it's man, insane. You got me excited. So, um, <laughs> so, when did you feel the business was like, like, you literally sat in your truck, started up in the morning, you're like, Wow, okay. I got a serious thing going on here. Like, I'm really on another level now. Where, because that's right behind where you're like, now I got to hire someone. Because right now, I'm at that level where I'm like, wow, I got a serious business. Like, I so, keep laughing about the push more minivan, but really, I got a rig out here now. Like, I have a full-blown business and didn't even realize it because I've been collecting it slowly but surely and not realizing it's all adding up. And now when I sit back and actually think about it and look, mm -hmm. I'm like, 
wow, like, it's all just came out of nowhere, like, bam. So when did it come to your mind to, like, okay, shit's getting serious. I have to hire someone. When you overwhelm, when you overwhelm, when you, like, it, when it's like I don't have enough time, like, so, uh, when, I mean, when it's like you, you getting calls and, uh, and you're like, I can only do maybe eight in a day by myself, but I could actually do 12 if I had enough, you know, when it comes to that. And maybe, actually, I, I would only do maybe, in all honesty, I would do like three or four, have a lunch, and do like another three or four. But I was like, man, another thing, I'm exhausted at the end of the day, and I'm constantly getting calls. And I want to plug, I got to give uh, Johnny a In my taking off, so I started out after I got. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Just in case you guys don't know, I'll yeah. definitely put a link up for him. But yeah, he is a huge. I'm a huge fan of his channel yeah. too. Like myself, he's located out of Savannah, and he does. I mean, the work, the quality he does is insane. He's. Yeah. I mean, like I said, get a chance, follow yeah. him. So I'm 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 taking off. Uh, but I, I started, I don't know how I found his channel. I think I might have just put Savannah Lawn Care. And I started watching him. So. Now, is he the first channel you ever start watching lawn care wise? No. I think the first. Man, I can't. Maybe it was, uh, it was either top, maybe top not. No. Retirement, and okay. I have a big VHS. Okay, but outside of it, this is like the only thing. You yeah, have. I just okay. dove in. Okay, keep going. So I had gone on Vista Print, and I had the, the basic card. Everybody like, I mo blue, I edge. It was a green card with the lawn on it and some sprinklers, <laughs> and that was my card. So I said, okay. So I went and I got like a green polo or whatever to, to match my car, but I had nothing on it. And so I'm like, man, I'm really going somewhere with this. So in the in the military, mentorship is key. So I said, I need to find me, I need to find me a, a, a mentor or somebody. So I don't know how, but I stumbled across Blades of Grass. And I might have put in Savannah or whatever on YouTube. So I call him. I said, I'm like, hey man, uh, you retired army, I'm retired. You know, I'm just getting started. I'm like, we're not in the same area, but I'm trying to do this the right way. Can you give me some advice? He's like, yeah, man, let's meet up. What? <laughs> so I go to Savannah, we meet. He said, Let me see your business card. I'm like, What? So I give him my Vista print. He's like, Man, that's garbage, man. 
Everybody's business card is green with a lawnmower on it, and it says, I mow and I blow or what have you. Mm -hmm. Your card needs to stand out. If I put this card with other card, who, why, why would they pick your card over that one? And I was like, wow. So he's like, you need to have a different color. You need to have a, a card that pops, that draws attention to it. Everybody has that card. Yep. So I'm like, what? So, yeah. So he, and he is like straightforward. He don't sugarcoat it at all. Nope. And that's what you need. So I'm like, whoa. So he's like, Man, let me educate you on it. So he told me, like, this is what you need to have in your car. Look at mine. It's a reason why this is there. It's a reason why this is there. On the back, you need to leave a space so you can take notes. Like, he just broke down. A, I didn't even know it was that much to a business car. Yep. Now, and then where did it come in to be? You got to hire someone. So... <laughs> you get so in the details and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so after my, after, uh... Okay, so when did you start hiring somebody? Fast forward, fast forward to the point where I'm getting, like, I can't even do my work because I'm getting so many calls. So this is, like, after... Now, I, I have an awesome business card. I have a logo created. Like, all that is like a whole story in itself. How I came up with my logo. Uh, now, I've created... Now, I'm creating a brand at this point, but I'm still alone. And I'm working, and I'm getting so many calls, and even I'm working and people coming up to me because I have my truck logo, I have a polo with my logo, awesome business card, uh, and I'm putting out good quality, and I'm putting signs in the yards. So I'm getting, I'm overwhelmed, right? And I'm like, man, money falling out the sky in this thing if you do it right. And so I'm like, I need to hire somebody. But really, man, I, I ain't really have a clue. Like, well, how much do I pay them or, or what? So I start asking other lawn care, like, well, how much do y'all pay, you know? So I asked like several to come up with an idea. Around here, they get paid uh, between like nine to $11 an hour to start. So now I'm, I'm looking at, okay, um, how much can I, can I afford to pay $10? So I'm just like, well, I look, I'm, I'm like, well, now I gotta figure out what's my average yard, right? So on PayPal, you can do a report and it'll tell you what's your average yard. So it said my average yard was like $54, right? So I'm like, okay, well, yeah, if I pay somebody 10 and I'm still making 40 or whatever, that's still good. So later on, I found out from like, um, uh, I think Johnny Moe broke it down when he was sent. It was either Johnny Moe or Andy's lawn that was saying, uh, what's Andy's um, company? It's not Andy's. Clean Cut. Clean Cut Lawn Care. No, the other one that uh, teaches. From Florida? Florida Turf? No, from, uh, I think he's from Portland or Seattle. I, I'm, he's right down the top of my head. Ah, I can't think of it. Yeah. But, okay, well, well, anyway, somewhere I heard that you break it down into uh, your employee should get paid a quarter of your average. 
So let's say your average yard is $40. Then you shouldn't pay more than 10. So that gives you $30, right? So let like my average was 54. So I guess if you broke that down, divided that by four, then that's how much I could afford to pay an employee. So that's that I heard I didn't that, know that from somebody. So that's how I pay, I start out at 10, and then after six months, I take them up a dollar. So right now I have Luke, Luke, is make, Luke makes 12, and I got a couple that make 11, and everybody else makes 10. Because that's based on my average. And then um, when you talk about labor, so back then I was trying somewhere I heard you want to try to make a dollar a minute. No. Right. So so no. Not, yeah. So that. But I'm telling you that was my thought. So I said, well, hell, a dollar a minute. If I do an hour of labor, that's sixty, and I'm still paying him. So I can pay somebody ten, and I still make fifty. So I started asking on the street, man. I didn't know, like, I didn't have a thought process to go, like, to uh, unemployment or, uh, what's his name, uh, Florida Turf Pro. Mm -hmm. He said he went to the fire department, and those guys have, like, a lot of days off. And he was a policeman, so he had a relationship with, like, the local fire guys, and he was like, Hey, if one of y'all want to make extra money, I can use the help. That's how he got his first guy. So, man, it just it just fell in my lap. I knew a painter. And he was like, man, you did say you're looking for somebody. Don't, I know this kid, he just came here from uh, Columbus, Ohio, and his dad had a lawn service. Man... He said, if I put him on to you, how much you going to pay me? That's what, that's how. I'm like, I ain't going to pay you nothing. Okay, so I have another question on top of this. So, yeah. So, pros and cons with hiring somebody. So, right now, I can do, I do eight yards, ten yards by myself. Mm hmm And, but it, it's bad when I get home. I mean, I don't want to make no food. I don't want to cook. If I try to cook, I fall asleep and it burns. So, like, I can do 10, but it's really hard on me. It's hard on my body. It's hard on my mind. It's just hard. So, that's why I'm hiring somebody. So, now that I'm hiring someone, I'm only getting 7 to 6 done. Because now I have to backtrack and check on his work. Mm -hmm. And I need to know. I need, And that's cool. I'm fine with that because I'm training. So I know I'm going to use more gas, I'm going to use more time, I'm going to use more, you know, because I have to train. I have to get them to this level. Nobody's just going to come in the game and be like that. Even if you have experience, yeah. you have bad habits. Because how the last long care ser service ran their business, Carl don't run his business like that. I don't run my business. We run our business our own way. Mm -hmm. So when you have someone coming in from another business, they have their habits. But you have someone no habits, you got to teach habits. So either way, you're going to have to teach and learn I mean teach them to know how you run your business but what was the pros and cons of hiring someone so let me answer that that's easy so when he when I got this is the pros to him this the well this is the good or the bad what's the good and the bad on it the pro the pro is the extra person saves you a third of your time okay so let's say if if a yard takes you six an hour by yourself, with that second person, it should cut down to forty minutes. When you have a third person, a three man crew, then that same house that took you sixty by yourself, that took you forty minutes with two, it should take twenty minutes with three guys. So no. that, that's how I look. That's how it is. One other thing. Yeah. Seth the Lawn Surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, Keith Kalfiz. Stan Genex. Everyone. I'm not going to say your mm -hmm. name drop everyone. But like they all tell you guys you need to know your numbers. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still learning all my numbers, but do you see how confident and how comfortable he just spits the numbers up to like 45 minutes? You know what I'm saying? He, that's what you need to be able to just know your numbers where you're not thinking about it. I mean, he's been in the game so long where it's just natural. But that's what you need, that natural. You need to know your numbers, know how long it takes at your yards to cut. You need to know how long it takes to edge a property, the weed mm -hmm. whack a property. I mean, you need to know everything. That's Numbers is everything because the numbers don't lie. So, so like when I like you saw me today, I got three. It was me and two. So normally, this the two guys they go out, but like we're behind because of the rain. Me too. So when I got three guys, man, like we did. <sighs> think yesterday we did like eleven yards in five hours. Five hours, right? So. And we didn't take a, we didn't stop. So when we got done, I treated them to Little Caesars. A five dollar pizza, man, they, they love you, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, when you got, so that one person gonna say, so that one person's gonna cost you, let's say, with me, ten dollars an hour, but they gonna cut down my time by a third of the time. Which means if you can do the same number of houses in less time, then you come home with more energy. And you leave yourself open for more booking, for more jobs, for mm -hmm. bigger jobs. You you, you kind of clear the slate quicker. So if you have like 20 houses for the week and you have the people working with you, now you're getting 20 houses take you we don't take, we do it in a day, but say 20 houses in a week and you're doing like three houses. Now you have someone working with you and you're knocking them all out in like literally a half a week. Now you have the whole other week for more business, more jobs, more promoting, more advertisement. You have more time and like you said, more energy, more time with the family. You know, you can even just get a crew together where they're cutting and now you're advertising. You know, and you're not even doing the work but that's a mm -hmm. whole nother level from where i'm at and also so on your training if you come if a guy comes that says he has experience the first thing hold I on do, hold on this guy told me i look for people to work with me and i don't mean to cut you off but he, i had to tell you this since you're in this category yeah this guy was i was like i need someone to work for me these guys out here will tell you everything I can cut, blow, mow, I can use any oh, equipment. Hold man. on, hold on. I can do this, I can do that. I, I can know. do, I can use the zero turn on one hand. You know what, they, I mean, they, they talk to you like they're trying to date you, like they're on a dating line, like, yeah, I got this and this and this. And then you use them, and they came a weed whack. All right, go back. That's I had to put that first, out there. So the first thing I do, because now they see everywhere, every like every week, man, because they see... Your truck logo, then you come out with your shirt, you know, what have you. And it's like, I'm in the gas station anywhere, and it, hey, you hiring? Man, I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. If it's the peak season, lawn care, and you got experience, and you're not working for somebody, that means you either a problem, or you've been fired. I didn't think about that at all. Never put that in the perspective. So I'm like, okay, okay. So I get, I always get a benefit. I always get. benefit of the doubt. So I say, okay, well, what can you do? They all tell you what they can do. So when I, but when I start them, the first thing I do, I tell them, I take the line off the trimmer, string this line for me. And that tells everything. Because the speed and the quickness of how they do it. It takes something to even even if on the speed head, you still gotta like cut the line, measure it. Like I'm looking at if they know how to do the speed head, well, how much line are they putting on it? You know, cause I got a certain way, but the the industry has a certain standard too. It's like two arm lengths. For the speed head. I don't think about stuff like so, that. That's so smart. We, that's what we do. One, two. 
That's and then cut. So, but we you give them because the edger is kind of like dummy proof as long as they keep it in the line. But no, they, no, 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 no. But because my help is went all out. So I tell them, learning. the edger is like scissors. When scissors, the metal rubs against each other. That's what does the cutting. So if you don't hear that blade touching that the sidewalk, it ain't working. You're not <laughs> scissoring through the lawn. So if you don't hear it, you off in the grass. So that I'm like, you don't worry about the blade. I, that's I buy blades by the case. I need to hear that blade up against that sidewalk. And so, don't and don't yeah. and make sure it's spinning when it goes down, but don't go down on the cement. Yeah, don't eat up the cement. <laughs> but on the trim, on the the first thing I do, I give them the trimmer. <clears throat> now, and I'm watching like, okay, so uh, uh, especially on the old school kind where you gotta spool it, right? Cause if you experience, that company gonna have you doing groundwork first before you get on that mower. So if you got any type of experience, you should know how to run that trimmer. So that, that, I give them the trimmer the first thing, and then I see, I'll say, okay, well let me see you trim trim some stuff, and I'm looking at like that. But now, but, yeah. do you usually go to your Country houses were more open and more like if they mess up, you're not gonna see it because they're out in the boonie, out in the backyards. Or do you take them straight to your pristine houses yeah, where? To the new. Exactly. I, I mean, I just want people to understand yeah. and know. We know, but I one. made that mistake before. So, uh, like, I had an older guy, and he was like, he so he do he knew he did have experience, but. His experience was like doing commercial, like the schools, and I took him to my houses. That's a different. When you're doing commercial, there's room for you error. You can butcher it, yeah. There's room for but, error. So he trimming my house, and I got him in the backyard, and he's trimming down to the brown. And I'm like, hey. I mean, he's burning it. And so then my customer was like, Carl. I know, <laughs> I know you had somebody new at my house, and I'm telling you, do not bring him back here. They know, they know, they know, man. So I had to tell him, man, you don't trim to the brown, you trim to his even. So yeah, but I don't know, like a magic place for you to hire. I would say like uh, Florida Turf Pro. He said you can go to like your local fire department and ask them guys because they're fit. You know, they firemen, they fit. Most of them are. You do have some that got bellies <laughs> like me. But but still, don't let the fat fool you now. But uh, he said he that's where he got people. I've gone to unemployment uh, before, but I didn't have really good luck with that. Um, and word of mouth though, word of mouth, but, so I really don't have like a magic place, um, where you could go higher, uh, like some, some cities, like some major cities, they have guys that like, there, there are certain places where they labor, hang out, and maybe you can find a good worker there. Florida does that. They have day labor. You know, uh, yeah, like, so, like, uh, well, another question, because we gotta yeah. cut this video short. Um, when was, what were the, the bad parts? The, the, the con, parts? the con, yeah, of what the cons. So the con is, well, like, I feel you have a list of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, the con is that, now, you responsible for this person's work. And health. Well, yeah, and health, too. Because we're using a lot of, I mean, it may be just yard equipment, so, but it is dangerous equipment. You're responsible for this person. So you're responsible now 
Because, like, it'll stress you out if you think about it sometimes. Because I'm like, man, this dude has a, a wife. He got a child. Now, he's coming to work full time with me. I'm kind of responsible for him now. Like, plus you have a wife. And I you have, have a family, child. But, but it's like, if I don't do... You know, I I can face the music and go home to my family, but here if if I don't keep customers coming and can't pay him or what have you, now you know he got to go home and answer to that. So it's like the responsibility of taking on another person in uh, lifestyle, and so uh, another like when they're new, like how you say you got this new. The customers don't want to hear that he messed up and trim and cut my flower down that I've care. been growing for the last year because he knew. It's like, you can replace it, but it's not the same. It, it, it's like, man, that was my, like, uh, I, I had a, a family so the kids, they're growing like a watermelon plant. And it all it and we almost chopped it up. And he was like, Man, I'm gonna put that in a flower pot because that's my children's watermelon plant. You know, like if you chop that, yeah, you can replace it. But now I got crying kids in the house. Yeah. You know, they ain't gonna yeah. understand yeah. that. It's a you principle, made a it's a principle of so you you constantly like like you said you got to try to keep an eye out on them or give them like a job you like okay after you edge you going you got to get laid out so that <clears throat> and let them know hey don't jump ahead of what I told you you know because you got to keep control cuz you're responsible for the outcome cuz you still want to give the same quality, quality that you can do by yourself because it takes time to make them into a mini me, a me. I like that. And so you're not going to get that overnight. You, they're going to make mistakes. And, and even and you got to have patience. The experienced ones, even the experienced ones, I'm like, hey, it ain't where you from, it's where you at. And I don't really care that you think it's faster that way. But you're going to do it my way, even though you think it's slower. And it might be. But this is how we do it over here. And this is how I want you to do it. Somebody on, I'm like, uh, even the ones with experience, I'm like, you got to do it my way. So you got to come over here. You got to be teachable and trainable. I it and listen because they all come. Oh yeah, I know how to do it. Oh yeah, when they say that, they're turning you off. I know how to do. It. Oh yeah, I got it. No, no, man, you don't got it. That's why I'm saying something to you. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be telling you what I'm telling you. So they have to be open. They gotta be trainable, teachable. Uh. In order for them to become that mini me of you, so it take time, it take patience, it takes a lot of like repeating, repeating, repeating. And I guess my military background helps it's out it's with structure. that. Yeah, and I run it like the military. Like I run it, we wear a uniform like today. You saw, we all had. Shirts on. Not me. Not you. But all they all they all. Let's see. Uh, now you guys look sharp when you're out there. We had our shirts on. Dustin had the hat on, but that's okay. But you either gonna have black pants, khakis, or blue jeans. We all had boots, and everybody had a belt. I tell them, no belt, no work. I, they come out to the truck with no belt. I'm like, what? Where your belt? You need to get a belt. Don't come. Got there is no pants sagging because 
you representing me, man. Yep. If I'm not around, somebody driving down the road might need lawn care and they'll stop you. So you represent me. So you not going to come here. We're we not going to have no, you're going to have a shirt. You're going to have a belt, the proper pants and boots. And, and that's, you have to like, you got to, you got to run it. That way, the same quality that you putting into that yard, it needs to be seen because this is a great tip my professor told me. And uh, I felt bad about she that. said, she said, you're in, when you in line, she said, any service business, let me back up, any service business which we're in, you're in the people business. First and foremost. So she said, you're in the people business. You just happen to cut lawn. That's how you <laughs> like got to go. I like that. <laughs> you got to go along your day because before you even turn on the mower. You have to talk to somebody. You got to talk to them and you got to win their trust for them to even let you come and get into the their yard is their personal you they open and allow you into their personal space right so before you even turn on the more you gotta win their trust you gotta be confident they gotta look at you you know like are you the professional now they can hire the hustler for thirty dollars they're not getting quality but when you come and say it's 60 well you you're going to have to back that up with your your appearance, what you say, how you carry yourself, your confidence. Amen. And you like, yes, ma'am, it's 60. It's 60? Well, that's way higher than such and such. Well, man, that's because I'm a professional. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the top-rated lawn services, man, in, in the area. You can go on Google and see my reviews. We're, we're a gold star business on Google. And you don't get that overnight, you know. And and you can go to my website and you can read my reviews. And ma'am, I have a crew, a professional crew. So I can't, I can't make it on $30. And right. so ma'am, it's 60 and if you allow us to do that first, I promise you, you'll be happy. With I've, that, I've with heard it. I've heard it one time. All right. Well, yeah. we got to cut it. We got to cut it because it's about that time. We're already over our limit on it. But I definitely, <laughs> I definitely appreciate Man, having you. I'm sorry. I can talk. No, no, no. I definitely appreciate it. I know everybody <laughs> on the channel appreciates it. I can talk. It's good info. We're definitely going to have you back on the channel. Um, I'll talk to you guys later, man. Get Carl, you have anything to say? Everybody out there, man. Uh, just, just wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Just start wherever you are. Um, YouTube is awesome. It's so much information out there. I've been in the game a long time, and I still learn from other people. Um, just start where you are, and and don't be embarrassed, man. Start with the end in mind. Because when you're doing this, at the end of the yard, <laughs> there's nothing to be embarrassed by. <laughs> and I would just say, don't give up. But the most helpful key I could give you is find you a mentor. Yes. And I know as I corny as it sounds, you got to find that big brother that is not ashamed to tell you what you need to be heard. Because somebody said, if you're the biggest fish in your bowl, you need to get a different bowl. So you always need to have somebody that can tell you how they got big, right? So don't, and I know it sounds corny, oh, get you a mentor. But that's the key. You can have all the money in the world and lose it overnight if you don't know what to do. So that mentor, just like I have to say Johnny, he was like that a landmark 
in my company just from his advice on my car and my appearance and and how to create a brand so it's it's like priceless that i got from him and then it just from there took off took off like when you see my car and i'm yeah i know i can talk <laughs> but just how you go into ace hardware and you can see my car it stands out from my, all the other car it's a bright red Side car back. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bright red, just like this shirt, bright red card. If I put it on the wall, if I have it on, it should pop. It should it should stand out. But so I'm gonna say mentorship is the key, man. Mentorship. Use YouTube. Uh, so find that person and don't give up, man. How they say they say start. Just start where you are. Start with the end in mind. And don't yeah. don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Like, oh, make your own. Like the only person you need to comp compete against is yourself. Do be bigger and better from what you did yesterday or today. Do bigger and better. Don't try because oh they got this and this and this. Don't go off of what everyone else has. Go off of what you have and where you're at and where you're at now. I'm telling you. I'll talk to y'all later. This is Triple E Care. We out.